I've had some pretty good success with Neo Caradina shrimp tanks. Now I've never actually set up a specific breeding tank just for the Neos, so in this video that's what I'm going to do. So currently I have actually got quite a few tanks running that have got quite a few Neo Caradina shrimp in. You know, like I said, I've had medium success. I feel like I'd have really good success though. My water parameters straight from the tap, apart from chlorine and that sort of thing obviously, are actually really well suited for Neo Caradinas. Like for instance, this tank here. So this was one I set up just as plant storage. And then one day I just put a load of Neos in, like for instance, there's one there now. I recently took quite a few out because I set up another tank that I put lots of them in. Uh, ecosystem, no filter bowl. And this right here is that tank. This one's got loads of Neo Caradinas in, loads of tiny little babies and that are rescued. Well, not rescued, but took out of another escape when I created this. And I, it's so good. We can't see them all at the moment, but there, there is a lot in there. I mean, there's one down there and, well, I can't see them right now. I've got, there's one, yeah, there's loads anyway. So yeah, in those kind of setups, like the bowl, I don't do anything specific. I don't overfeed it or underfeed it or feed it at all. I just let them do their own thing. But what I actually want to do is set up something that I'm monitoring every day, feeding tube, you know, that sort of thing, the, the proper style shrimp tanks. So yeah, going back to this tank, I really like the size of it. It works so well. It's a 60 centimetre, so two foot by one foot by one foot works great. I'm keeping that one as it is though, because I still use that for plants every now and again, just plonking them in, taking them out for new setups. But right here is my Amazon aquarium. Absolutely love it. Set it up like a year ago now, and underneath, well not that version, there was a version before, similar sort of theme though, year ago. But yeah, and underneath had a plant storage tank, this one here, which was also set up. So that's been running for a year. The filter's not running at the moment, that's all off because it went a bit wrong. But the substrate is very, very mature. Now I'm gonna use the substrate, I'm gonna use the tank. Don't want a black background on it though. So where's it gonna go? So behind us here look, is the racking system. I'm gonna take out two of these rack, uh, cubes here that aren't being used. These two are, we've got fry in that one, Pistogramma fry. Hello, buddies. There we go. You can see him. Yeah, Pistogram and Fry. And in this absolute monstrosity, there are two Bristol Nose Plecos. There's a male and a female, really big ones. So I'm going to keep those two, probably put them either side. The other two tanks aren't being used at all. I never really used them, so I might as well take them down and use the space. So what I'm going to do now is scoop out all, oh there's quite a few snails in here, I'm going to pick them all up and keep them to put back in a tank when we finish this. And then I'm going to scoop out all of this soil and the water, put it in a bucket so we can reuse it when we set up the new tank. So there's a good amount of stuff like crusted on the side here and a good way to get it off, little razor blade. I think these are used for cleaning like oven glass and stuff like that. Anyway, they work so well, look at this. Comes off so easy. I just want to get off the proper rough stuff because we don't want to over clean the tank, obviously. Might as well keep some of that sort of algae on there lower down. I just want this like mineral stuff all around the rim off. Well, there we go, guys. My tank is looking crispy, like so clean, ready to go. Question is, where am I going to put it? Now, obviously, I want it to go on this rack. So, like I said, in here is where bristlenose plecos are. Um, I've just fed them. The food's gone already, so they're, they're all right, even though I can't actually see in it. You might hear I sound a bit funny as well since the last clip. I've woke up today with like a stinking cold. It's a cold, all right? Okay. So yeah, I want to keep the bristle nose and I want to keep the fry tank here. These are doing really well, these are Pistogramma. The other two, I could take them out. But there might not be enough space on this shelf for like two of those and also the tank. I mean, the math says that there should be, but like, I don't want it to be too squished in, do you know what I mean? Now, you might also be thinking, MD, you usually use low iron glass. So like that tank there, look, for instance, that's low iron glass. But this tank here clearly isn't, so it's just like, look, it's just thin, normal glass with black silicon. You know, to be honest, it's because this is going to be a shrimp tank. It's not like a like a proper planted tank, you know, for display purposes. It's going to be functional. Also, it's only 30 centimetres of height, which is the same as the cubes that we've got over here. Now, this one here is 40 centimetres of height, which means I wouldn't have any clearance. Um, I suppose I could change that, but I don't want to fiddle around with all the racking. Anyway, enough already. Let's get going.
Now, as always, no one wants to wait for paint to dry today, so that's why we break out the heat gun. There we go, that's dry enough. That actually looks really sweet, and I'm so glad I took the decision to keep a gap between and like take out one of the um, one of the cues, just because it looks so much better, doesn't it? Obviously, I'm going to fill all this up and put the filter back in, um, but then we can get started building this tank. It's about to like fully crack on with the build, but behind the tank is looking horrible. So I just want to paint that first. Yeah, look at that. Well, is that showing up? I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but it's quite sort of patchy and probably some mold spots or something. I don't really know. Anyway, it's best to do this now whilst we still can. Now it definitely would have been a better idea to paint that white before I painted that black. Because now we've done that, <laughs> not to worry, I'll just touch it up again, be fine. Okay, there we go, that's all done. But before we like start the full build, I just want to do something to get some shrimp ready. So yeah, I'm just going to place some food in the fork. Oh, there we go, we've got a nice one there. Hello, hello little one. Really nice size, that one, look. Yeah, I'm going to put some food in the front here, just so a good group of them come, and then we can transfer them over into that proper aquarium. Now, there should be at least 10 in here, I'm guessing, because I, I did remove quite a few. We'll see, we'll just see how it goes. But a great start is that's a female, and I did just see some males floating around. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, there we go, they're already starting to come over. Let's just leave this for, there we go, there's a male as well. Leave this for a bit longer and carry on with the build. Okay, so I've ordered a few items from Amazon. This one's well packaged. Look at this, little bio balls. And we've got this like cool double sponged filter thing. Look at that, oh, I've just broken it, I think. Oh no, I haven't, yep, look. Pipe on the top, outlet that goes on the surface of the water. And maybe that is broke. No, that's not broke, that clips on that. There we go. Nothing is broke, okay? <laughs> I also got these cool little wood things that the shrimp like to go around on. And I've got a feeding tube. Ugh. And I've got a feeding tube with like a bowl and it sits and clips to the side. I don't know if it's gonna be any good, all right? I got excited. <laughs> just started clicking buy it, buy it. <laughs> None of it's expensive, you see, so I just went for it. But before all of that, we need to get the aquas oil in. Haha, <laughs> now we're making progress. The soil is in and look over here. The shrimp are coming to the front. Now, I had no idea actually there was this many. I'm already counting about 15 to 20 in just this section alone, and there's probably still more to come forward. I should probably start catching some of them, shouldn't I? Ah, <laughs> that is sweet. We have got loads in there. There's actually, oh, look, there's one. There's still loads more in there. So I'm just gonna leave that food in the foreground. I'll come back to it again in a minute, but oh, this is gonna be a great start. And some of you might notice that I've got like black sakuras, I've got a couple of cherries, and then loads of natural colored ones. I don't care what color they are. I, I love them all, I think they're all great. And the purpose of this breeding tank is to, you know, have big numbers to be able to put around all the other tanks. So I don't, I'm not worried about colors, just hundreds and thousands of them, that's all I want. Now the good thing is we're only removing all the larger sort of adults, there's tons of little tiny ones in here, shrimplets, and they'll go on to you know, grow up and be bigger as well. So we'll have effectively two shrimp tanks. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, so that's just a really good idea. Right then, let's get this filter fitted. I don't think it's complicated. Although there's no suction, oh yeah, there they are, suction pads, sweet. Right, now time for these cute little wood things. Um, I assume they sink. I mean, you'd hope so anyway. I think I want to do them in like a, like a playground. So do them like in a pyramid or something. I don't know. And then maybe one on top like this. Yeah, there we go. 
How nice is that? <laughs> okay, so then I've got the little feeding thingy bob <laughs> to go this side. Oh, this is just looking so class. Oh, I moved the whole thing then. Look at that. Awesome. Now I've also got like a nice little moss ball. Look at that. So green. I'm going to pop it right there. <laughs> I suppose we could technically just fill that up now, but I do want to add one more thing, and that is I want three rocks, uh, black lava rock, and I just want to put a load of moss all over it. It'd be really easy to like trim out in the open, and I think it'll look great against a white background as well. And it'll just be good for the shrimp overall. I mean, the, the lava rock's brilliant for beneficial bacterial colonization. The moss is just something they can sort of peck out the biofilm. So yeah, I think it's, it'll look nice and it's a good idea. But before that, I just want to get some water in, fill it up because I'm a little bit worried about the aquasol drying out. It's okay at the moment, but it won't be for long. Right, so that turned into a huge mess. The, uh, the wood did float. I don't know why I thought it wouldn't be honest. So what I'm gonna do is stick it to some rocks and then stick it to itself and that'll be fine until it sort of all sinks. I just used a cyanoacrylate super glue gel. But first of all, oh my goodness, I haven't turned this off. There we go. <laughs> I turned it up, not off. Right, I'm gonna have to drain some out. Then I'm gonna have to put some boiling water in because the heater in the building isn't working. It's just been fixed, but it's gonna take some time before it warms up. So I'm gonna have to heat this up with some boiling water and just get it to the right temperature. Um, we've got loads of time before we put shrimp in, so it's all good. Right, the water's up to temperature. I've got the filter running already. There's two things I want to do though. I want to add some beneficial bacteria first of all, uh, just to get everything boosted running along. I don't think that the aquasol is going to be enough, so that's why I'm doing that. It's really murky at the moment as well. And the second thing I want to do is seed this filter. And to do that, I'm just going to take the lid off the filter on this one, this little hang on the back. And then I'm going to take out one of the sponges, this one here, which is pretty grimy. Take it over whilst dripping everywhere and just completely squeeze it into this tank like that. Look at that. Oh, it's dirty right now. It's very, very dirty, <laughs> but that's going to help no end. There we go. Okay, so that's clearing up nicely. Now, whilst it's doing that, let's get these wooden pieces stuck down to some rocks. Cyanoacrylate glue, I'm just going to stick it onto them like that and then stick the rest to it. Should be good. Oh my goodness, that is looking so, so sweet. It's proper cute, isn't it? Uh, there's still one thing left to do though. Remember what I said? I wanna put that lava rock in there as well. So here is the lava rock that I picked out, just three little pieces. I think this one's wet or it's just darker. I don't even know. Anyway, here is the moss. So yeah, this is the moss I'm gonna use. This is basically my moss storage tank. I've also got some uh, hornwort, is it? That might be quite good as a floating plant as well. A little sprig of that in there. But yeah, I'm just gonna pick some off and stick it to those rocks. So it is now actually the next day and look at the tank, it's looking so good. I'm, I didn't actually think it would look as good as this because it's so simple. I'm used to doing more sort of complicated style aquascapes, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, just look at that. I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. So it's very, very simple, isn't it? But that's what you want from a shrimp tank. So you can see your numbers, that sort of thing. Um, you can see grime or anything building up. But saying that, you know, neocaridinus aren't as sensitive as caridinus, so we should be absolutely fine with this tank. And I should just, I'm hoping for a number explosion. I mean, just look at what we've got here. <laughs> we've got a little playground. We've got our little moss ball, which is for some reason reminding me of like a little mushroom just sat there. We've got the moss at the background that's on the, um, on the rocks. It's absolutely perfect. So it's because it's so simple, we're gonna be able to see the numbers. We're gonna see them breeding, that sort of thing. I can't wait. There's only one thing to do really. And that is to get the shrimp, oh, oh, oh sorry, 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 to get the shrimp in. So yeah, the room is heated to tropical temperatures and uh, that means that water is now the same temperature as them. So there's no need to temperature acclimate and all that. We can put them straight in. Okay, so I'm literally gonna put them straight in with the, uh, you know, the jug they've been sat in. There we go, guys. Enjoy no, out, come out, enjoy your new home. Whoa, there's loads of them. <laughs> How cool is that? They're hanging on. Is that all of them? No, there's still a few there. Come on then. There you go. There we go. Oh, straight away, this is good. Look, we can see everyone moving around because they stand out so much. Like in the background here, look. 
like right back there. Oh yes, that we've got some buried ones as well. Yes, that's brilliant. That one there, right in front of us, it's buried. Oh, it's hard to pick out there, but um, on the underside there's a load of eggs. That one there, the red cherry, is saddled. We're not getting good focus, are we? Yeah, it's saddled. There we go. Which means at the back, on the top of it, it will push down and become eggs. Look at the absolute size of this one in the foreground here. This is the black Sakura. Whoa, she's an absolute beauty, isn't she? Yeah, look at a beast. Oh, look, and we've got some blues as well. I didn't even know there were blues in there. That's a male. And then that's a blue as well. It's really dark blue, almost black. It's so blue. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. It's so good. You can actually see all the shrimp. There's one there. Is that buried? Yes, we've got another buried one. So you see on the underside, all those eggs. That means we're gonna get babies in here. Oh, we're off to a fly. And that one's buried as well. <laughs> These are blues. These are the uh, uh, blue dream shrimp that I got so long ago. I split them about in different tanks, but uh, I didn't know we still had any left, to be honest, because in that other light, you couldn't tell they're blue, but in this one, it works perfectly. And that one's, oh my goodness, we're just gonna have babies everywhere, aren't we? Yes! And you may have noticed then that even though those shrimp were in the jug just overnight, we've already got a load of molts down the bottom. They look like dead shrimp, they're not. They're just their outer shell. Now, apparently the best thing to do is just leave those in the tank and they'll actually consume them for calcium, which is ideal because they need calcium and uh, other nutrients that they've, they've got in their shells to be able to actually shed the next shell. Do you know what I mean? So the way that shrimp grow is they, they break out of their shell and their new form is emerged. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Right, what I want to do now is feed them. I've got some little algae wafer pellet here. I'm going to try it out, try out the tube. Is it going to work? Oh, of course it's going to work. Oh, hang on. Plonk it at the top, falls down. La 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 la, there we go, ideal. <laughs> I think the benefit of this tray you see is that the, um, the food doesn't just get into the aqua soil and then just like stay stagnant in the bottom of it because obviously we haven't got plants drawing out a load of nutrients, so I don't think you want that. I mean, they'll probably move it around themselves anyway. I've got a few more than that. I've got uh, three tiny little nuggets and that should be plenty for the amount of uh, shrimp we've got in this tank. I wonder how long it'll take before they come and get it. Now there's that, uh, there's that cherry again with the saddle on the back. See that, see that goldness to it? Now, um, when the egg, when it becomes fertilized, they come down into that bottom section like we've seen on so many others. Oh, have you spotted the food? Can you sense it? Can you smell it? It'll be interesting to see how long it takes for them all to come over. They already are some of them. Let's do a time-lapse and see them all come over here. Okay, I won't lie. I was expecting a few more than that. <laughs> it's only been a few minutes though. Sometimes I can leave it and walk away and come back the next day even, and it's absolutely covered. But they all know something's up, look, because they're all going nuts back here. Now there's one thing missing from this tank, which actually works really well in shrimp tanks, I've found anyway, and that is snails. So up above, look, in this tank, this is where I breed a lot of my ram's horn snails. There's some pond snails and that in there as well. And I've just stuck an algae wafer in the little uh, plate thing, bowl thing and they're already all over it. So I'm just gonna take whatever's in there and transfer that over to this tank. The benefits are then that any waste that's dotted around, the snails will pick up and if the, if the shrimp don't, you know what I mean? It's also really good for keeping everything clean and that as well. And just, yeah, just in general, the whole sort of system just works better. Again, this is just what I've found. There are so many shrimp keepers out there probably say that everything I'm doing is wrong. Don't do this, don't do that. But you know, I seem to have had good success so far, especially with what we're seeing in here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna come in and pick it up. Oh, this is a good guy. Look at the size of this bad boy. Do I wanna take you? I do want you, you're chosen. Okay, here's the dish. I'll take out that algae wafer because I don't want that going into the uh, shrimp tank. Put it back in there. There we go. Right, here we go. Release the snails. I don't know why I'm using these sound effects. All of you, I want you all in. Come on, you're all good. You're all good to me. Now look, I know some people hate snails, but I absolutely love them. Every single tank I can put them in, I do. Some tanks, um, the, the uh, fish actually eat them, but not in most of mine. I found that my electric blue acaras, they were eating the snails. But that might have been just because I had them up there in that small area with them, I'm not sure. But there we go, guys, all good. We've got this amazing looking little ecosystem now. I'm so happy with it, it looks so good. Right, one thing I just noticed uh, when I was editing the video is that in here, I had a little planaria. Now, planaria are like little wormy things. Uh, they're pretty natural stuff. They're not very nice looking, to be honest. But what I need to do now is treat this tank, and I'm gonna have to treat this tank because I've just obviously plonked them in there and I'm pretty sure there'll definitely be some. Let's look around and see if we can see any. Yep, yeah, there we go. Look at that. See that little one? They like little flatworm things. 
They've got like an arrowhead on them, see? So they're not that harmful to like snails and fish or anything like that, but they are harmful to baby shrimp or possibly adult shrimp as well. So I'm going to treat this water. I've just got this stuff here. I can't give you links to it, guys, because apparently I can't import this stuff anymore. It's not legal, um, but I imported it a long time ago. I've had this for so long now before it was like a problem. I don't know why it's a problem. It must be something in there, but this is called Aqua Lex. I don't know. It works though anyway. So I'm just going to dump a load of it in here. Well, not dump it, the right amount and that'll get rid of the plenary in here. And I'm just gonna treat that tank as well, to be honest. Okay, so it's all quite simple. All I have to do is add in two of these little spoonfuls for this volume of water. It's just like a pink little sort of powdery thing. Anyway, it doesn't say too level or too heaped. So I don't want to overdose, so I'm just gonna go for two sort of level. Now it does sort of coat stuff for a while, but that's all right. There we go, as long as it does the job. And to be honest, even though I only saw those couple in there from when I put the snails in, there might have been some already from the different mosses and from the aquasaur from the previous setups as well. So this is probably really good practice anyway in a shrimp tank just to, to kill off anything that's in there. It also kills hydra as well, which again can kill shrimp. So now it's sort of like it's snowing in there. That's okay, if it does the job, I'm happy. Hopefully we can continue to get good success. I'll keep you guys updated if you promise to subscribe and hit the bell and the like and all that stuff. See you on the next one.